a parishioner was coming out of the church one day, and the priest was standing at the door, as he always does, and he was shaking hands. And he grabbed this parishioner by the hand and pulled him aside. The priest said to him, you need to join the army of the Lord. The parishioner replied, I'm already in the army of the Lord, Father. The priest questioned, how come I don't see you except at Christmas and Easter? He whispered back, I'm in the secret service. (laughs) It's funny, but the sad thing is, this is a reality for a lot of people. We call them CEOs, Christian and Easter only Catholics. But Jesus, he didn't die on the cross for us to be CEOs or to live a mediocre life. He died on the cross for us to become saints. St. Gregory the theologian, he once said, yesterday, yesterday I was crucified with him. Today I am glorified with him. Yesterday I died with him. Today I am quickened with him. Yesterday I was buried with him. Today I rise with him. We have to die with Christ to rise with him. We have to live with him in this life if we hope to have eternal life with him in glory. Gregory, he goes on to say, Let us offer to him who suffered and rose again for us ourselves, the possession most precious to God and most fitting. Let us give back to the image what is made after the image. Let us recognize our dignity. Let us honor our archetype. Let us know the power of the mystery and for what Christ died. And if we look around the church, we see what Christ died for. It was for every one of us so that we could participate in what we celebrate today, the resurrection. The psalmist said, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. But with all the violence, the hatred, the anger, the division that we see in the world today, it can make it hard to rejoice and may even cause us to question the resurrection. Did it really happen? Why are things so bad if Christ rose from the dead? And we may be tempted to blame God for all the bad stuff that happens. But rather than blame God or question whether the resurrection happened, we could ask ourselves, have we risen with Christ? Or do we choose to remain in the tomb with a stone rolled across the entrance? In our first reading, the disciples, they speak about being witnesses to all that Jesus said and did that they've been commissioned to preach and testify on his behalf to all people. The disciples, they didn't remain in the tomb after the resurrection, and Jesus didn't let them return to their old ways of life as if nothing happened. But each of them came to believe so strongly in the resurrection and that Jesus was the Messiah that most of them gave their lives for the faith. And the fact that most were martyred tells us that their time wasn't much different than ours. There was violence, hatred, and anger. There was division. But their faith gave them hope and brought a light to the world that didn't just remain in Jerusalem, but spread to the ends of the world. Now, every one of us has the potential to be a light to the world. When we watch TV and hear and see all the negativity in the world, I think it's natural for us to want change. But change, as I've once said, always has to start in our own hearts. The apostles and saints, they teach us that real change comes by giving ourselves fully to God. And St. Faustina, since we have Divine Mercy Sunday coming up next weekend, um, I'll use her as an example. She was a little soul with a third grade education, but she gave herself fully to God. And that message of divine mercy, it spread from her to the ends of the earth. She was a light for the world. St. Francis, he once said that all the darkness in the world cannot extinguish the light of a single candle. And that's what we see in the lives of the saints. That's what was represented last night at the Easter Vigil. This light of Christ from the Easter candle, it burned brightly. All the lights in the church were out, and there was total darkness except for this light. And the darkness didn't overcome it. 
In fact, our attention was probably fixed more on this light than the darkness that surrounded it. And perhaps this singular focus can help us. St. Paul said in the second reading to fix our sight on the things that are above, not below. To fix our sight on Christ, to be eager for him like Mary Magdalene or Peter and John who ran to his tomb. And we show this eagerness by living the life of faith. Now, it's 7.15 in the morning, and so my guess is that most of us are already doing this. We're living the resurrection, the life of glory here on earth, at least as far as we can. But there are still those who prefer to stay in the tomb. They're so focused on the things of this world and even forming habits of sin that they miss Christ and the blessed life that he calls us to live. But today, we celebrate a new day. It's the day of resurrection. And this day gives us hope that the cycle of sin can be broken. And it reminds us of the life that we were made to live, the life of glory, which can start here on earth by living according to God's will. And imagine the change that we would see. St. Faustina, she was just one person who changed the world in a powerful way by becoming a saint. Well, if that could happen with one person, imagine what God could do with all of us working with him. It wouldn't just be one light, but many. It would be a raging fire that would spread ac across the earth and cast out the darkness. And this can happen, brothers and sisters. The world has the potential to be a better place. We have the potential to live the life of the blessed here on earth. But for this to become a reality, we can't settle to be CEOs and we can't settle for a mediocre life. We have to strive to become saints by giving ourselves fully to God. This is the path to the resurrection. It's the way we honor God and acknowledge the great gift of Christ's death so that with him we can one day rejoice in heaven.